Hello and welcome back, football fanatics. It's Craig Forslow with another installment of the 2020 NFL Draft Player Profile Series. Today we're going to take a look at LaVisca Chenault, wide receiver from Colorado. And before we jump into the nitty-gritty, let's go ahead and get the quick info on LaVisca Chenault Jr. He's a wide receiver for the Colorado Buffaloes in his junior year. According to the school website, he's six foot two, 220 pounds, and came to the Buffaloes from DeSoto, Texas. When we venture down to the career highlights, we can see that he was named to the All-American teams by a couple of different outlets, Pro Football Focus and Phil Steele's College Football after his sophomore season in 2018. And then as of October 3rd, 2019, we can see that he has 110 career receptions, which ranks 14th in school history for 1,405 yards, which puts him 15th in school history. And now statistically, when we look at those numbers, we can see that a majority of that production uh, came in 2018. So we can see that of the 110 career receptions, 86 came uh, in 2018. And then with the six rushing touchdowns, we can see five of those came in 2018. As a true freshman, uh, fairly limited uh, touch-wise, um, but sometimes that is the case with freshmen. But you can see as a sophomore, uh, really exploded on the scene. Um, now, when you're looking at the, the games played in 2018, it was nine games. So in nine games, he was over 1,000 yards receiving. And in nine games, he had 11 combined receiving and rushing touchdowns. So highly productive player. When I talk about the playmaking ability and being dynamic, a home run threat, anytime the ball is in his hands, that is what I'm saying. Now the rushing stats, um, yes, there are five touchdowns. You see that the attempts, the yards, average, maybe you're not understanding how five touchdowns comes on 17 attempts. And um, basically what it was used, uh, basically how it was used was in a wildcat Package. Anytime there was short, tough yards that were needed, LaVisca Chenault uh, got the nod. He, he grinded out all the tough yards for uh, the Colorado Buffaloes um, offensively. Um, and really, those, those touchdowns um, are because they came on goal line and red zone opportunities uh, for the most part. Now, when we come down to 2019, we can see that through four games, essentially half of that 2018 sampling, uh, big drop off. Now, that could be for a couple of reasons. Teams keying on him, uh, maybe Colorado um, has adjusted a few things offensively, um, which they have. They've gone to a more pro style offense this year in 2019, which has created less manufactured touches. Um, well, that's what it was in 2018. Uh, anyway, they could get the ball to LaVisca Chenault. They did get the ball to LaVisca Chenault. Um, they do have a solid quarterback in Steve Montez. Um, so maybe that could be part of the reason as to why they've moved towards a more pro style offense. But <clears throat> still early on in the season time for these numbers to come up. No reason to hit the panic button just yet. Now, we can go ahead and we take a look at the list of 2018 games that I uh, either watched in full or got solid chunks of to uh, make my assessment on LaVisca Chenault and his uh, abilities. And then... After that four-game sampling, we're going to go on to what I love. And what I love is the big playability. There was a touchdown of 25-plus yards in six games before his injury in 2018. So, again, he's able to hit it from anywhere on the field. Uh, big playability. Just got to get the ball in his hands, and beautiful things happen after that. The versatility. Um, he's lined up in various spots on the field. Um, in the backfield as a Wildcat quarterback, uh, different spots as a receiver. Um, so that could play well in today's NFL. 
um, as teams are getting more creative with how to get playmakers touches, lining them up in various places on the on the field. So maybe LaVisca Chenault uh, will, will fit that mold, um, be moved around a little bit uh, all over the field to try and get him touches. He's a deep threat with size. So at 6'2 and 220, he, he's not a fragile or smaller receiver that's a burner than, you know, some of the smaller receivers uh, that might come in like the Deshaun Jackson type mold. Um, he does have very, very high end elite athletic ability. It is a rare combination of size and speed. Physically, um, he reminds me of Julio Jones, just a tad bit shorter. Um, but then also, I do see a lot of Larry Fitzgerald uh, from a size wise, height, weight. Um, having the dreadlocks too doesn't doesn't hurt them uh, from a physical um, standpoint. So. When it comes to NFL players that you can kind of get an idea for who he is size-wise, um, somewhere between Larry Fitzgerald, Julio Jones, he's a little bit shorter than Julio, um, a couple pounds heavier than, than Larry Fitzgerald. Um, he makes contested catches, so he's not someone that needs to have a whole lot of space and separation in order to make – uh, play on the ball in order to have a positive outcome on a route. Um, he is able to make contested catches. We've talked about the big playability, so that's going to lend into the tremendous vision, not only as a ball carrier, but tracking the deep ball, tracks the ball so well with his eyes, gets under it perfectly. Uh, just a very good deep ball uh, player. There's no other way of putting it. He's just very good with the deep ball. Um, Mel Tucker is a person that I put a lot of uh, – a lot of credence into a very well respected defensive mind, not only around college football, but has had stints in the NFL defensively as well. Um, and uh, if he has the stamp of approval from Mel Tucker, who's had a game plan for some of the best playmakers um, in recent memory, then definitely uh, take that and run with it because he sees what, goes on day in and day out uh, trying to stop him with his own defense at practice. So definitely it's always good when uh, a, a mind like Mel Tucker is a, a fan of yours. And he gets involved as a blocker. Um, not saying that he's going to <clears throat> make all his money as a blocker, but he gets involved as a blocker, whether it's in the run game uh, on the outside, if they're using him as a wing or an H-back type, of player in a formation, he just gets involved as a blocker, uh, not afraid to mix it up, which is very good because uh, sometimes with wide receivers, you're worried to, about how committed they are to other aspects of the game outside of catching the ball. Now, improvement, areas of concern, general observations. When it comes to route running, we talked about the manufactured touches, lining him up in the wildcat at running back all over the field. And uh, he, he was all facets of the offense. He was the number one option in the pass game uh, when they needed the tough yards. In the run game, they went to LaVisca Chenault. So uh, whatever they could do to get the ball in his hands is what they did. Now, I'm not sure – what that did for his development as a route runner. You do notice on film that sometimes his routes are not the cleanest. He does break them off. Uh, footwork sometimes can get a little uh, cumbersome. It's not the best footwork, but because he's so athletic and he's just such a physical specimen, he is able to overcome some of those um, inefficiencies in his route running. Um, but we will see how that, translates into the next level there is a medical history uh multiple surgeries he had a toe surgery and then surgery on a torn labrum he was able to come back participate um fully and has not had any ill effects so far um but there is another injury that did pop up most recently he did not dress for the arizona state game due to injury on uh, in 2019 so it's missing games in 2018, 2019. Now you're wondering if this is a dur durability issue because of the manufactured touches and because of how 
heavily utilized he is in that offensive game plan for the Colorado Buffaloes? Or is this just something that's going to carry him um, throughout his career? Is it going to follow him? Uh, Will he become just another injury-plagued player with a ton of talent? Uh, You hope not, but that could be a question that some teams are going to have coming up here as the the evaluation season gets more and more intense and we get closer to uh, the draft weekend. And right now he's more of an athlete than a football player. And I guess the question that you can ask is how much football growth does he have? I feel that he hasn't even touched the surface with his football growth. Um, When you look around and you see different uh, people uh, evaluate LaVisca Chanel and his game and his skill set right now, you'll see some people that will say that he's reminiscent of Cordero Patterson. You'll have some people that will say he's reminiscent of Juju. Um, it's all up and down and all over the board with, uh, with LaVisca Chanel. And we'll get to some of my comparisons in a moment, but I feel that he has a ton of football growth left. I feel with him being the centerpiece of the offense with the Colorado Buffaloes, it is only going to make him that much more dynamic in the NFL once he's able to settle in and truly focus on one true position and uh, maybe having a small specialized package where you use him in a wildcat or in the backfield, but really just allowing him to spend 95% of his time mastering his craft. Um, I, I feel that's where a lot of the growth is going to come in, that we're going to have a very special wide receiver on our hands in the NFL. So what is the final verdict? He will be one of the first wide receivers taken in the 2020 NFL draft. Uh, Jerry Judy's another name that's going to be thrown around out there. Um, I think that he can make his case to be the number one receiver taken in this year's upcoming draft. Um, I feel that when he gets to the NFL, he's an instant impact, instant starter type player. <clears throat> I, I personally believe that he's going to dominate the NFL combine should he elect to participate. The speed, the size, the physical skills, um, it should just make for a wonderful showing on his part and really help his draft stock soar even higher. Um, we've talked about the multi-positional NFL. I feel that he should fit well in it. I believe that he's best used with a small specialized package where he's, you know, in a wildcat type situation and you let him spend 95% of his time mastering the wide receiver position. Uh, He's going to need to focus on that route running. As I mentioned, it's not always the cleanest. He does break it off. Uh, So I guess, you know, some, some issues with the footwork, if you want to get nitpicky with it, um, So route running is going to be a a major uh, push of his coming into draft season. Um, He's beaten good cornerbacks in his career in the Pac-12, so the level of competition is there. Um, There's no real major concern considering that he's been the everything for the Colorado offense and still produced at a very high level, taking on some of these Pac-12 defenses that have featured um, NFL defensive backs that he has gone up against. So, <clears throat> with everything going into that, we get to the player comparisons and the draft grades. Um, I have an early grade one uh, round, excuse me, an early round one grade on LaVisca Chenault. Um, the earliest I think that he could hear his name is top five. Um, I think being the first pick mentioned as the first pick is an out of consideration. Um If he's to slip, I feel he's still in round one, going somewhere between like 17 and 23. Uh, But most likely, I see him going between 7 and 12 uh, overall. Um, Now it gets to player comparisons. I see a best-case scenario being a a game-changer, a top-end wide receiver in the NFL like a Julio Jones or DeAndre Hopkins. Worst case scenario, I see a more athletic version of Des Bryant um, or someone that's going to give you similar production to Michael Crabtree. So that's just where I see him <clears throat> with uh, his evolution and maturation as an NFL player as he gets into his career. So 
I do feel that he's a very high-end round one pick that should be an instant, an instant contributor to whatever team he lands on with a very dynamic skill set, which makes him a home run threat from anywhere on the field. <clears throat> and then just in summary, the information obtained in this uh, presentation, you can see right there, the Colorado website, um, and then where I found his statistics as well. So once again, just covered LaVisca Chenault Jr., wide receiver, Colorado Buffaloes. Uh, one of the most explosive playmakers in the 2020 NFL draft needs to improve a little bit on the route running. But as we get closer to draft season and draft day, this is a name that will be mentioned <clears throat> at the top when it comes to the wide receiver class. This is a very special wide receiver class heading into the 2020 draft. So expect LaVisca Chenault to be a high end draft pick as he uh, is one of the better wide receivers in this year's draft class. So LaVisca Chenault, it's the name to remember.